For more on this, joining us live is the Australian Energy Market Operator CEO, Daniel Westerman. Daniel, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. How would you characterise the importance of coal in Australia's energy mix off the back of that report? Well, just to outline that uh, this integrated system plan um, is undertaken every two years and it's a really extensive um, consultation and analysis process. Uh, the, the Really, the two guardrails that it solves for um, is the least cost mix of investments needed both to uh, meet Australian energy consumer needs as demand grows out into the future um, and meeting government policy targets. And so the extension of, of coal in this report um, really is a, a reflection of uh, the Queensland government's very clear indication that they uh, see coal in the system in Queensland uh, for longer. Um, and so therefore this report really does uh, reflect that. What we know in the system at the moment, though, is that uh, that coal is operating in different ways. Um, we're seeing uh, owners um, choose to disconnect their coal power station for uh, for periods of time before they before they retire. Uh, what's um, what's consistent about this report is um, it, it really does reinforce the um, uh, the the. the I guess the, uh, the, the narrative that AMO has been very clear about um, over many years now, which is that Australia's coal-fired power stations are, are old, they're retiring, and um, the demand needs of Australians uh, are growing. And the best way to meet those needs is through a, um, a investments in renewable energy, um, in firming through batteries um, and pumped hydro, uh, backed up by gas as that ultimate reliability backstop um, for the grid and connected in with investments in transmission. So when we look at renewables, has the government been overly optimistic when it comes to their hopes for wind generation? As I understand it, this report uh, really does cut the targets for wind generation capacity that's expected to be available by the end of the decade from it was around 42 gigawatts to 26 gigawatts. Explain for us why that previous goal was found to be unrealistic. Sure. Well, uh, as I said, this uh, report is produced every two years and of course um, it takes into account the updated inputs. Um, things change over two years and uh, the cost of wind has increased um, over the past two years. The cost of transmission has also um, increased. The cost of solar has come down, uh, the cost of batteries has, uh, has come down um, and we're seeing greater momentum uh, in home batteries as well. And so the inputs into this um, analysis have, have changed. You'd expect that um, with wind being a little bit more expensive, um, solar and storage being a little bit less expensive, um, then there is uh, less wind and more solar and storage. Uh, what, this, uh, what this does show though is that um, the momentum that exists already um, in, uh, the investment, um, in, in the investment pipeline of projects that are seeking to connect into the national electricity market um, is there. So we've got about 50 gigawatts of, um, of wind and solar and storage that is seeking to connect into the national electricity market um, over the coming few years. Um, and it's, it's terrific to see investors, um, as well as governments and consumers, who are obviously at the heart of this energy transition, really leaning in um, and uh, really leaning into the transition. Daniel, do Australians need to be worried about possible blackouts over summer? Uh, well, this summer we've already seen a little bit of uh, hot weather in Queensland and, and New South Wales. Um, and uh, but from a power system perspective, um, there, we have more generation and storage this year than we did last year. So look, absent um, any um, unforeseen circumstances, consumers should expect a, um, a pretty normal uh, summer and, um, and hopefully get the opportunity to have a break over the festive season. But backouts are likely, are they, do you think, the, the year afterwards, if the nation's largest coal power plant in New South Wales does close in 2027? Uh, well, the vast majority of, um, of uh, loss of power uh, is due to um, damage to local poles and wires that are near people's houses. So that's not really um, the, the, um, the, the absence of large generation is not really the, uh, the main cause of, of, of blackouts. We are pointing to um, the, uh, the closure of a raring that is mooted for 2027. Um, and in fact, um, a week or so ago, AMO had, uh, has released a report that just outlines the conditions, not just for uh, the closure of Araring, um, but also for uh, many other transition points uh, that we see throughout the, the journey over the decade ahead. 
Um, it's clear that um, it, the Australian power system, which has historically been uh, reliant on the coal-fired power stations that have been in service for decades, these coal power stations are on average 38 years old. Uh, and like an old car, they, they will break down and, and they do need to be replaced. And this report that we've produced today um, outlines that the least cost replacement uh, for that energy, um, while meeting government policy targets um, and reliability is to continue the momentum in uh, investment in renewable energy, in batteries, uh, in pumped hydro, um, and gas as that ultimate reliability backstop connected in with, uh, with transmission networks. Daniel Westman, appreciate you making the time. Thank you. Thank you.